Hi everyone, welcome to Play Hokey with me. My name is Roz, and this week I wanted to share with you a collection of crochet gift card holders. These are super quick and easy to do, won't take you a lot of time, and add a little bit of whimsy to a really popular form of gift giving. I've done these videos a little bit differently. If you've already seen this intro, I'm leaving a timestamp here so you can skip directly to the main pattern. But if this is your first time watching, I'm first going to share how to make the base of your gift card holders, the yarn, the hook, and all the measurements, followed by the main pattern, how to seam the size of your gift card holder, and then finally some options on if you want to have a closure for it. I think that's about it. So yeah, let's go ahead and start playing some hooky. To get started, let's talk a little bit about the yarn and the hook size. For all of these patterns, I used a standard acrylic yarn in medium weight four. The required hook size is a five millimeter, but I would suggest that you go down to a four millimeter to make your stitches more condensed and tight. I actually used a 3.75 millimeter, but that's just because I had it close to hand and I like that size. A typical size for a gift card is about two by three and a half. I think these were two and a quarter by three and a half to be specific, but you get the idea. The card holders themselves, I made about three by four inches. We're going to do 10 single crochets across and then 14 rows high. For the gift card holder, we're going to make two sides. Start with a slip knot on your hook and we're going to chain 11. Skip the first chain from the hook and do a single crochet in the second chain. Followed by single crochets all the way across. Once you've reached the end, chain one and turn. Work in the very first stitch with a single crochet going through both loops at the top. and continue across. Coming to the very last stitch of row two, insert your hook in both loops, and row two is completed. Chain one, turn your work, and continue this all the way up until you've done 14 rows. For covers that have color changes, I'll share that in the main pattern tutorial. If you skipped ahead and you missed the portion where I share the dimensions for the body of these holders, um, I'll leave a timestamp here so you can go check that out. And then once we're all on the same page, be sure to make a plain side for the back of your cup. To begin your mug, go ahead and do 12 rows of single crochets. Remember we're doing 10 single crochets as the length and we're doing 12 single crochets up before we start the coffee. Okay, chain one and turn your work. We're getting ready to start row 13 now. This is going to have the brown coffee. We're going to transition to the brown, so we're going to only work the next single crochet halfway through. In the very first stitch here, start your single crochet, pulling through. You'll have two loops on your hook. Grab your brown, wrap it around your tip there, pull it through both loops, and we're ready to start our brown. Because the colors are quite similar in tone here, I'm going to go ahead and carry the green along. It camouflages quite well, so I'm not too worried about it showing through. Okay, in the next stitch, we're going to do one single crochet with the brown. One half double crochet in the next stitch. Now we're going to do four double crochets. One, two, three, 
three, and four. Now working back down again, half double crochet in the next stitch. And now a single crochet, but don't finish it. We're going to bring the green back into the game. We've been carrying it, so it's right there ready. Yarn over and pull it through. Drop the brown, don't worry about it. And do your final single crochet. Chain one and turn. We want to round this a little bit, so in the very first stitch, just do a slip stitch. And then we're going to do single crochets across like normal. Okay, and then in the final stitch, do a slip stitch again. Now go ahead and make the back for your coffee mug and we'll get ready to decorate. To make the eyes, it's really easy. Go ahead and get a long strand of black onto a tapestry needle. Decide where you want to put your eyes and then you can use your stitches as your guide. I like to use the two little spaces uh, to do mine, but you may want yours to be a little bit bigger, totally up to you. And I'm going to do three passes. One, two, and three. And then at this point, if you want a little speck of white, I just do the same thing and I put it up in the corner, but just one pass through. Once you're done, just tie your ends. Taking care not to pull too tight on the front side. You don't want to pull those stitches back. For the mouth, the same thing. Go ahead and grab some yarn and a tapestry needle. I like to use the stitch lines as a guide. Kind of get it where I want it to be. Now I'm just going to fasten it on with three little stitches evenly spaced, one, one in the middle, and three. And for the little snowflake, uh, super easy. Start with a slip knot on your hook. We're going to chain four with a slip stitch. One, two, three, four. Chain three. One, two, three. Slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Single crochet into the center. Slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Single crochet into the center. Chain two. 
slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and just repeat this process until you have six points. When you've done your last point, instead of finishing with another single crochet, go ahead and slip stitch into that base chain that you started with. And then use the tail to attach to your mug. If you wanted your center to be tighter, I would suggest doing a magic ring or you can do the magic tail and I'll leave a little card here for you to check that out. Once you've done all of your embellishments and everything's attached, go ahead and skip to the next portion to see how to seam your sides together and then we'll attach the handle to your mug. Seaming your pieces is very simple to do. We're just going to do a simple slip stitch all the way around three sides. With the single crochet, you get very uniform stitch patterns, so it's easy to see where you want to put your stitches. You have about 14 uh, spaces here that you can work into. I would not stress too much on this. Less is more. If you are not getting exactly 14, don't worry about it. Uh, you just don't want to go over 14 stitches because if you do, then your piece is going to get a little wavy. Starting in the very top corner, go into both pieces and pull your yarn through. I'm not doing a tight slip stitch to connect the two pieces together. I like to have the freedom if I'm not liking how this looks, I can easily pull it apart and start over. And now we're just going to do a slip stitch which gives a surface crochet appearance on the top of your work. You don't want to work this too tightly because your piece is going to start bunching up on you and you want it to stay flat. And to stay relaxed, just kind of play with the tension of your stitches before you move into the next one. You'll get the hang of this. Okay, going into the next sort of gap, making sure I'm going in both pieces. Yarn over, pull through, pull through. And that's the second slip stitch done. Going into this space. Pull through. And I'm just going to continue doing this all the way to the corner and I'll see you at the corner. I've reached my first corner and at this point I'm just going to do the typical slip stitch. I am not adding any extra stitches on the corner. I did try that and I didn't like the look of it. It kind of elongated the corners and I wanted it to stay as uniform and square as I could. So I found it was just best to do one slip stitch in the corner and then move into the next natural gap that I saw making sure I'm going in both sides, pulling, and then continuing on. And this one's pretty easy to see. We're now at a length of about 10, and you can use your stitches here to guide you. Once your pieces are seamed together, it's time to add the handle. You can decide where you want it on the side, just however it looks pleasing to your eye. I have mine starting sort of two rows up and finishing uh, two rows down right here, sort of in the middle. Go ahead and insert your hook wherever you want to start your handle. Now, I don't start with a slip knot on my hook. I start with a loose piece of yarn, and that's just because I often find that I need to pull things apart and start over. It just saves me time in the long run. What I'll do is I'll just weave these ends in later. Yarn over, pull through. That is not counting as my first chain. That's just to kind of fasten on. 
And now for the handle, I'm going to do eight single crochets. One. Once you have your eight single crochets, decide where you want to attach. I go in about four rows. Pull through and do a slip knot, chain one, and turn. Now let's do 10 single crochets in this strand here. I do that because eight just doesn't seem to fill it that well. Take care not to overlap your stitches. and 10. And then finish off with another slip stitch into the same place that you started. Now this side is very reinforced. This one only has one connection. So if you want, you can go in and just do a little pass here to just stitch it to make it even more secure if you like. There are several different ways that you can go about adding a little closure to your gift card holders. You can do something just with a spare piece of yarn, just tie a little bow, uh, either close to the edge so there's no peeking allowed, or a little bit higher if you want to hang it up in a tree. But one of my favorites is adding a little button to the back and doing a simple clasp. I just take a piece of yarn in a matching color, slide it through two loops at the top, tie it, and there you go, you have a little button clasp. This can also serve as a hanger as well. I hope you enjoyed these patterns, and if you did, be sure to check out these other gift card holders.